Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Victim or another thug? You people asked for it, we got it. Trans terror, billionaire death sentence, and what is a woman? We might find out soon. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News and uh, TGIF people. Thank God it's Friday because it's been a long week full of terrible events and news all over the globe. So let's find out what else is happening. Uh, like and subscribe. Mask comes off after 10,000 likes or subs, whichever happens first. You get to see what's going on underneath this mask. Heart stopping body cam shows Chicago man, 26, opened fire on cops days after firearms court appearance prompting officers to shoot back 90 times and kill him. So here is the the uh, juicy beef that all the other news stories are missing. The fact that this uh, individual shot at the police 11 times, and he also had a uh, court appearance on firearms-related charges just prior to this. So let's dive right in. Heart-stopping footage shows the moment a Chicago man opens fire on police before cops shoot more than 90 times to kill him. Dexter Reed, 26, was following a traffic stop in Humboldt Park after police pulled him over for allegedly failing to wear a seatbelt. The shooting on March 21st came just days after he appeared in court in connection with firearms charges, NBC reports. Body cam footage shows plainclothes police officers approaching Reed's SUV and ordering him to roll down the window with their weapons drawn. Reed refuses at first, before several gunshots can be heard. The Civilian Office of Police Accountability said preliminary evidence showed Reed fired first, injuring one officer. However, this is not clear from the footage. As you can see, they're approaching the vehicle, probably verifying if he's dead at this point. Heart-stopping footage, yep. And here's an image of the individual there, uh, a mug shot, it looks like. And here is the car full of holes because he was in the car when they shot. And that's perhaps why they shot so many times because they wanted to eliminate the threat that was coming to them. They couldn't verify whether he was incapacitated or not. So, And there was many officers on the scene. Uh, there is an image of the uh, victim. A gun was later recovered from the passenger side of the vehicle and an investigation is now underway. However, activists are already planning to demonstrate outside of Chicago Police Department's 11th District at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. I really can't explain the pain that me and my family is going through, but I just hope there are people out there who understand he was a son, he was a brother, he was an uncle, he had loved ones, Reed's sister, Portia Banks, told reporters. He was somebody very important. Absolutely. I'm sure he had a big impact on people's lives, but he made some terrible decisions in his own. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson told a press conference that he was devastated to be learning of another young black man killed by police, but stressed that he could have been grieving the loss of another black life if the officer had been killed. He had been hit. He spoke following the release of several body cam clips, including one from the officer who was shot. They now show the tactical unit driving up to the scene with multiple officers screaming commands for Reed to first lower the window and then to open the door. After he refuses... Gunshots erupt. A man calling 911 to report the shooting described it as shooting like they're having a Vietnam War. Yeah, because I guess there were so many gunshots heard. Reed exits the vehicle and slumps to the ground, ending up face down with his head near the rear passenger wheel and wearing only one shoe. So there's an image of uh, the individual who may have been shot. And there is the individual uh, who was shot and killed. An individual there uh, with uh, potentially a pregnant girlfriend. Don't move, don't move, the officers scream at Reed, who lies motionless on the ground as they try to search his body for a gun while slapping him in cuffs. I don't know where the gun is, an officer says. They later use a flashlight to look into the vehicle and locate the weapon on the passenger seat. He started shooting at us, another officer says. Afterward, more officers and an ambulance arrived on scene. All of us were shooting, one officer said repeatedly. Mayor Johnson vowed a full investigation, adding Tuesday's release was part of an effort to be more transparent. Attempts to withhold or delay information are mistakes of the past, he said at a news conference with COPA and Cook County State's Attorney's Office. As mayor and as a father, raising a family including two black boys on the west side of Chicago, I'm personally devastated to see yet another black man lose his life during an inter interaction with police. Yeah, 
it sucks. But uh, the dude had a gun and he shot. And there's a image of his mother, obviously quite distraught. His sister there, obviously quite upset as well. And of the officer, he added, if that bullet had hit him a few inches in a different direction, I would be here today talking about the loss of another young black man. It weighs heavily on me that the event took place just blocks from my own community. Um, nothing is going to bring Dexter back, but certainly efforts should be taken to make sure this doesn't happen to another family. Yeah, like teaching young black men to stop carrying weapons in their vehicle and to listen to police when they uh, ask him to roll down his window and get out. Whether you're white, black, Asian, doesn't matter. The police show up and you're doing something wrong. You better listen. We cannot make a determination on the shooting until after all the facts are known. Okay? And obviously, all the black people are super upset, saying this shouldn't have happened. Uh, why did they stop him in the first place? Why was there so many officers? It doesn't matter. The thing is, is that clearly all of those officers were needed because the guy had a gun and he fired upon them. What if there was just one officer and he killed that officer and drove away? Then what? Wouldn't be in the news, would it? Prior to this, Reed was awaiting a trial and firearms case. County records show he was first charged with a misdemeanor count of retail theft in April 2023 for allegedly stealing $950 shirt before the charge was tossed. He was arrested again on July 13th, 2023, when police allegedly discovered him carrying a loaded handgun at a music festival, despite having no concealed carry license and after his firearm ownership identification card had been revoked, illegally carrying a gun. Kobo was created in 2016 after the city was forced to release dash cam video of then officer Jason Van Dyke shooting 17 year old Laquan McDonald, contradicting officer's account that the teen had lunged at police with a knife. Its, irrespons its responsibilities include investigations shooting by police. Okay. Let's see exactly what happened here. Yeah, well, you know, uh, seems a bit excessive, absolutely. I mean, but when you are being fired at, the cop, the female cop there at her body camp, she did the absolutely the right thing. You are meant to retreat, find cover, and then see if you can uh, incapacitate the uh, assailant. And uh, quite a number of shots there. There was pauses. We couldn't really see what was going on on the other side of the van or uh, SUV, but uh, you could clearly see the individual there uh, on the back as they finished him off. So God rest his soul, and it is absolutely uh, terrifying to be pulled over by the police with guns in their hands. Uh, the, the young man has had interactions with the police in the past. He had charges coming. You know, maybe he was just going to roll the dice, play a little GTA, and hopefully, well, I don't have no idea what he was thinking. But until the full investigation's done, what it appears is just like they said, that uh, the individual started shooting and they were defending themselves. Jury's still out for now, but I mean, they found a gun, and if they can verify that he shot first, then that's it. Sorry. You broke the law. You're a criminal. You have a gun in your car. You don't have a conceal and carry license. Uh, you don't have a license to have your weapon at all. You shot first. You're dead. That's pretty much how it goes. Like, if you pull a gun, we covered a story the other day, a young black man uh, was uh, reported to have pointing a gun at a house and turned out to be a toy gun, and the cops shot him in the hand, eliminating the threat, 
and he got a whole bunch of uh, trash for what he did, and he didn't even kill the guy. He was defending himself. He shot once, eliminated the threat. They arrested the individual, but then they released his rap sheet and said, oh, well, they, this guy was uh, had a disciplinary action against him. And it's like, he didn't kill him. He saved his life. And the dumb, I'm going to say dumb, if you're walking around with a gun that looks like a gun, whether it's a toy or not, and you're pointing it at houses, pretending to shoot, someone reports it, and then police say, put your hands up. As soon as he put his hands up, the gun was in his hand. The cop was just like, boom. You know what I mean? Like, you're almost better off to not take the gun out, leave it in your pocket, have your hands free, and then get on the ground. If they say, do you have a weapon? Just be like, I have a toy gun in my hoodie. It's a toy. Don't pull the gun out, but hey, guess what? You're not, you don't know what to do. The kid was just messing around. Well, he wasn't a child. He was an adult. Anyway, credit card delinquency rates uh, were worst on record, Fed study. Almost 3.5% of card balances were at least 30 days past due. Doesn't sound that bad, but it is. When credit card balances can be up to like $80,000. So what happens if they go into insolvency and then uh, the credit cards have to write all that off? Well, interest rates are going to go up. They also talked about uh, in Canada, they're off the charts as well, as well as uh, business insolvency is up 122%. So everyone's hurting by these interest rates and uh, they're not lowering them uh, anytime soon in the U.S. Maybe December you might get a couple rate cuts. Canada is signaling they might start rate cuts soon. We'll see. But anyway, if you got credit card debt out there, see if you can consolidate it. Contact a debt consolidator. You might get, you might be surprised at how much money they're willing to take, a lot less than what you owe. If you owe $80,000, you go to a debt uh, consolidation uh, company, agency or whatever, and you say, hey, I got all this debt. They'll consolidate it all into one debt. And basically, it'll be a heck of a lot less than what you owe because they'd rather get something than nothing. So if you got some debt, call a debt creditor or a, a consolidation agency. Pansexual non-binary Irondale man arrested for explosive device left outside Attorney General's office linked to far left Antifa movement. All right, let's have a look. Trans anti-fascist action. Uh, looking unhinged and disheveled here in a selfie. Irondale man who allegedly tried to bomb the Alabama Attorney General's office building in Montgomery is a far-left anti-fascist sympathizer who advocates violence against law enforcement and his political enemies according to court records and social media. Kyle Benjamin Douglas Calvert, 26 of Irondale, was charged with two felony counts of malicious damage by explosives and one count of possession of an unregistered destructive device. The device was found on February 24th at 3.42 a.m. outside the AG's office in Montgomery. Authorities discovered it after someone reported a suspicious package in the area. The device was detonated and no one was injured. According to the court documents, the device was a coffee container-like vessel that contained insulation material soaked in gasoline or lighter fluid substance, a mortar, firecrackers, and nails. Kind of like an IED. Jonathan Ross, acting United States attorney, said in court documents filed this week, investigators were able to identify Calvert by stickers he placed on buildings at or near the scene of the attempted bombing that espouses various far-left terrorist sympathies. There you go. He left a breadcrumb trail right to his... Uh, his uh, red hands. The stickers placed on state buildings depicted different graphics advocating for various political ideologies. Some include the phrase, support your local Antifa. Antifa, short for anti-fascist, does not describe a particular group, but rather describes individuals who adhere to what they consider an anti-fascist belief. The term Antifa is often associated with anti-Christ, and sorry, anarchist violent extremist uh, individuals who, in addition to holding anti-fascist beliefs, are also opposed to capitalism in the current form of the U.S. government and who advocate violence to achieve their goals, Ross said in a filing this week. According to court documents, stickers identified as being placed on state buildings, which also match the stickers held by Calvert in social media videos, include an Antifa logo, anti-fascism is community self-defense, abolish private property, and everything for everyone, feminist action, arm the homeless, my body, my choice, F- Work, let's riot, never work, abolish ICE. Uh, ICE would be uh, the uh, group that deports people. On his Instagram TikTok accounts, Calvert lists his pronouns as they, she, and he. Interesting. So I guess that's pansexual. You're everything at once. Uh, he also labels himself as pansexual and links to the Trevor Project, which describes itself as the largest suicide prevention organization for LGBTQ young people in the U.S., and he has uh, 10,000 people following him. Unbelievable. His TikTok account, uh, Calvert, chimes in on politics and even laments Republican assholes in 
one where he complains about his conservative family members. Let's see what he has to say. So the dude sounds like a teenager, whinging about uh, not getting his own way. Whatever. That sounds like all these people. They don't grow up. They're, they're stuck in a fantasy of, of a, a teenage life, and uh, everyone's out to get them, and uh, they latch on to this ideology because uh, they don't have a group. They don't have anything that they really believe in. They don't have a solid foundation. So they latch on to these groups that are accepting and affirming everybody, and they pick one. I mean, pick one, pick a flag, pick a color, because there's a million of them out there. Uh, LGBTQ plus IA, whatever, it's alts. A-L-T-S, alternative lifestyle to procreation. That's all there is, and that it, that's it. Austria, transgender nurse sentenced to 20 years in prison following brutal murder of a paralyzed patient. All right. Trans-identified male nurse in Austria has been sentenced to 20 years in prison for the brutal murder of his elderly patient. The assailant, 24-year-old from Slovakia, repeatedly stabbed his elderly patient last year after a dispute broke out over his gender identity. Obviously a very violent individual, similar to the previous one. The murder occurred in the evening of October 5th at the victim's home in Gretzberg, where the nurse was providing on-call care. Due to Austria's strict privacy laws, not the identity of the victim nor assailant is known, but Redux has learned that the nurse had been working under the masculine name Paul and was active in LGBT group in Vienna. Though he is legally, he is legally a male, Paul was referred to as a woman in court by witnesses and the defense. While the motive for the crime was initially unclear, it was later revealed that the nurse attacked the 82-year-old paralyzed pensioner after the topic of the nurse's gender identity was brought up. He went to the kitchen and retrieved multiple knives, stabbing the man 11 times in the upper body, abdomen, face, and head. So a very intimate killing. Like, stabbing is like the ultimate intimacy. Um, like, you, like, anyone who knows how to use a blade, if you're trained in it, perhaps you could kill someone with one or two strikes. But uh, most stabbings, like the number of stabbings is like enormous because they don't know what they're doing. They're just going crazy with emotion. He went to the kitchen, retrieved multiple knives, stabbing the man 11 times in the upper body. Yeah, unbelievable. Emergency responders initially found the man alive and attempted to stabilize him, but the victim died of his injuries at the scene. The nurse was immediately arrested, but taken to a psychiatric unit in Kelper University Hospital in Neuromed after demonstrating extreme aggression and massive psychological abnormalities. I mean, who would have guessed? Staff initially believed he was under the influence of drugs due to his behavior, but a blood test only found alcohol in the system. While he claimed to have effectively blacked out during the killing, of course, I don't remember a thing. Uh, while he was claimed to have effectively blacked out during the killing, it was ultimately determined that Paul had no serious mental illness, which would have impacted his legal accountability for his actions. Yeah, he wasn't stupid insane, like, I don't understand right and wrong. You know, like a sociopath or something like that. He's just a dude who's confused and uh, was probably abused. Confused and abused equals trans. After being interrogated by police, the nurse immediately admitted to the killing and claimed the attack had been the result of the victim teasing him due to his gender identity and making transphobic remarks. Later examination also revealed that Paul had separated from his boyfriend earlier that day, something that was described as a trigger for his impulsive behavior. Yeah, so he's absolutely impulsive. We had a story there the other day about a son, worst son ever, shows up at his mom's house. Mom's like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. And he literally goes in and stabs her like 70 times. And why? What was the reason he gave the police? Because his mother irritated him for many years. Sicko. Like, sick. Uh, according to Pulse24 psychiatric expert Adelheid Kastner testified that Paul had an extremely high risk of recidivism and admission to a forensic psychiatric center was recommended. After a short jury trial with the unanimous verdict, Paul was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Yeah. 
Good luck, Paul. Uh, Austria currently assesses transgender inmates on a case-by-case -case basis, though the government has acknowledged that sex segregated facilities must exist. So is he going to try and get in a female prison? But he's, you know, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. These people are sick. Uh, in the head, you know, mental illness, gender dysphoria, DSM-5, look it up. It's real. Mental illness is real. These people don't need to be affirmed. They need to be talking about their trauma and how it occurred and uh, identify it and work on how to get past it, not just keep talking about it over and over and every day and then just going to the deepest, darkest hole. Truong Mai Lan, Vietnamese billionaire sentenced to death for $44 billion fraud. Look out. Uh, the Vietnamese do not play around with their billionaires. It was the most spectacular trial ever held in Vietnam, befitting one of the greatest bank frauds the world's ever seen. And you probably never heard of it. Behind the stately yellow portico of the colonial era courthouse in Ho Chi Minh City, a 67-year-old Vietnamese property developer was sentenced to death on Thursday for looting one of the country's largest banks over a period of 11 years. It's a rare verdict. She is only one of a few women in Vietnam to be sentenced to death for a white-collar crime, financial crime. Uh, the decision is a reflection of the dizzying scale of the fraud. Trung Mai Lan was convicted of taking $44 billion in loans from the Saigon Commercial Bank. The verdict requires her to return $27 billion, as some prosecutors said may never be recovered, obviously if they're going to, you know. Uh, some believe that the death penalty is the court's way of trying to encourage her to return some of the missing billions. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you don't, well, we'll kill you. But if you do, maybe we'll commute your sentence. The habitually secretive communist authorities were uncharacteristically forthright about this case, going into minute detail for the media. They said 2,700 people were summoned to testify, with state, 10 state prosecutors and around 200 lawyers involved. The evidence was in 104 boxes, weighing a total of 6 tons. Well, there's 11 years of fraud. 85 others were tried with Trong Mylan, who denied the charges and can appeal. All of the defendants were found guilty. Four received life in jail. The rest were given prison terms ranging from 20 years to 3 years suspended. Trong Mylan's husband and niece received jail terms of 9 and 17 years, respectively. There has never been a show trial like this, I think, in the communist era, says David Brown, a retired U.S. State Department official with long experience in Vietnam. There's certainly been nothing on this scale. The trial was the most dramatic chapter so far in the Blazing Furnaces anti-corruption campaign led by the Communist Party Secretary General Nguyen Phu Trong, or Phu Trong, not sure. Conservative ideologue uh, steeped in Marxist theory, Nguyen Phu Trong believes uh, people popular anger over untamed corruption poses an existential threat to the Communist Party's monopoly on power. He began the campaign in earnest in 2016 after outmaneuvering the then pro-business Prime Minister to retain the top job in the party. The campaign has now seen two presidents and two deputy Prime Ministers forced to resign and hundreds of officials disciplined or jailed. Now one of the country's richest women joined their ranks. Yeah, corruption is everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're a d democracy or a, a, a communist state. Corruption is there, because guess what? Humans are scum. Absolute scum. Look at them. Look at the thugs out there just beating people up and killing people and uh, just stealing things from stores without a care in the world. You know, murdering your parents, patricide. Like, what is going on? Good Lord. Come back. Come back. Quick. By 2011, Truong Mailan was a well-known business figure in Ho Chi Minh City as she was allowed to arrange the merger of three smaller cash-strapped banks to a larger entity, Saigon Commercial Bank. Boom, there it is. Vietnamese law prohibits any individual from holding more than 5% of the shares in any bank. Prosecutors say that through hundreds of shell companies and people acting as her proxies, Truong Mailan actually owned more than 90% of the bank. And that's how, probably how she got all of those loans. Yeah. So she was ordering them to approve hundreds of loans and networks. So what happened to all that cash? What did she do with it? Invest it? Interesting. I'm puzzled, says Long Hip, who runs the Vietnamese Studies Program in the IEs. Yeah, because it wasn't a secret. It's well known that the market Trong Mylan and her Van T. Pot group were using the SCB as their own piggy bank to fund mass acquisitions of real estate in the prime locations. Yeah, so, uh, you know, tickle me, tickle you, have a laugh. That's what was going on. Lithium ion battery fires on the rise across Canada, fire chief warns. And guess what? It might not be what you think. It's not the car, it's just exploding. Fire caused by lithium ion batteries are on the rise across Canada, according to the organization that represents the country's fire chiefs, prompting warnings from fire services, injury lawyers, and even Health Canada. Toronto saw a 90% increase in the number of fires involving the rechargeable batteries in 2023, a total of 55 fires up from 29 the previous year, and the batteries were on the leading cause of fires in Vancouver that year. It's a phenomenon, Ken McCullen, president of the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs, says 
fire services are reporting in the city big and small across the country and most cases share common origin. What we're seeing more so is the e-mobility devices and the most common that come to mind are the e-bikes, e-scooters and electronic stand-up one-wheel devices, McCullen told CCTV News. Extremely aggressive. Yeah, when these fires start, they're impossible to put out. Like when an EV crashes or whatever and starts on fire, they'll put this thing in a pond and just leave it there because it's going to reignite. So extremely aggressive and volatile in the sense that it happens very quickly and it's impossible to put out. The reaction of thermal fire is significantly different than that of what we're typically trained for. Industry and innovation is seeing the pace with which the fire service can keep up with. So they need a new substance to spray onto the fire. Don't ask 3M because they just got to pay like $40 billion for their uh, PFASs all up in your drinking water now because the fire department was spraying it on fires. All right. There you have it. Watch out for those e-bikes. What is a woman? The ultimate question that everyone is afraid to answer, except the tiger, because I know exactly what a woman is, because I married one, right? It's a woman, or a person, an individual, that has female reproductive organs, and that's it. That's it. It's not someone who grows their hair out and puts on lipstick and a bra and stuffs it, or goes ahead and gets surgery. You're not a woman. You're a person who wants to be a woman, or feels like they are a woman for whatever gender dysphoria mental illness you have and that's all there is to it male female man woman this gender ideology is just made up it's this whole thing is just made up they usurped the word woman so they can get into uh change rooms and locker rooms and on sports teams so without being able to call themselves a woman then they wouldn't be allowed to do all that stuff plain and simple trans woman is not a woman no matter what you want to say, what you want to do, it's just not the way it is. Even if they bring it into law in different countries and stuff like that, it still isn't. So what's that mean? Like, I'm a heterosexual, I'm a cisgender male, uh, and a trans woman hits on me, and I'm so sorry, I'm not interested. Uh, you know, I, I like uh, biological females. So, you know, I mean, is that person going to go to the police then and say that I um, uh, refused to engage in a relationship with them, so now I'm a bigot of some sort? Because that's what they feel, that you're transphobic if you won't date a trans woman. Because they are a woman, totally. Roxanne Tickle's lawyer says women-only app has a modus operandi of treating transgender women as men. Yeah, I can imagine. Just the same as uh, a women's locker room. They're a protected group. They want their own space. They want to feel comfortable. Well, uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable if a big giant lady came in uh, to the men's room and was like, I'm a dude and took a dump, I would just be like, okay, uh, I feel super uncomfortable. And what if I was there with my little daughter? And she's like, uh, is that a man, dad? I would say, no, it certainly is not. It is a woman who thinks she's a man because she has mental illness and she's latching on to something that makes her feel good. And that's all it is. But guess what? Court has been asked to define what a woman is in as a landmark gender identity discrimination case comes to a close in front of a packed gallery of trans women, writes campaigners in Sydney. Roxanne Tickle, a transgender woman from reg regional New South Wales, is suing the woman-only social media platform Giggle for Girls and its CEO Sal Grover for alleged unlawful discrimination after being blocked from using the networking app. On Thursday, the federal court heard this case is the what is a woman case. As closing arguments were made in the trial, the first time a case of an alleged gender identity discrimination has been heard by the federal court. Justice Robert Bromwich also heard that the Sex Discrimination Act was intended to protect individuals such as Tickle, who have received an enormous amount of online hate. In a lawsuit filed December 2022, Tickle claimed she was allowed to join Guild for Girls in February 2021, but her membership was revoked in September that year. She then unsuccessfully attempted to regain access to the app. Tickle is seeking damages and aggravated damages amounting to 200000 uh, her team claims discrimination took place when Grover and Giggle, represented by the former liberal candidate Catherine Devies, did not respond to her request for access and reinstatement to the app. She was also discriminated against when she was removed from the app, the court heard. Tickle found Grover's subsequent public statements about her distressing, demoralizing, embarrassing, draining, and hurtful, and led to a scale of online hell hate towards her being enormous. Uh, Grover has more than 90,000 followers on X, formerly Twitter, and has given up to 50 media interviews in which she has persistently misgendered Tickle, the court heard. Her legal costs are in part funded by the sale of merchandise that is demeaning to Tickle. The result was constant anxiety and occasional social suicidal thoughts, occasional, 
Tickle's counsel, Regina Costello Casey, said. She told the court the purpose of the act is to eliminate that kind of thing, and yet what it has resulted in is global campaign mother respondents against Miss Tickle. She claimed it was clear from Grover's evidence that a respondent has a modus operandi of treating transgender women as men. So what about all the women on this social app who are uncomfortable with Tickle? Okay? What about them? Can they go ahead and sue Tickle for forcing their way into the app that they felt comfortable and safe in? Anyway, the respondents argue that the sex is biological while gender is a bold, enterprising, fluid concept that has no boundaries, said Giggle and Grover's counsel. It's all about how a person perceives one's person's expression, she told the court. Gender identity probably was catered for by the app, but it was different identities of females. The court had early heard that Tickle had lived as a woman since 2017, has had gender affirmation surgery, and has a female birth certificate. She shops for women's clothing, uses women's facilities, and plays on a women's hockey team. Tickle made a complaint about Giggle to the Australian Human Rights Commission in 2021 that resulted in case tests. 2013 amendments to the Sex Discrimination Act that make it unlawful to discriminate against a person on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, or intersex status. So, okay, what about this? They have black-only math tutoring. So, is that... That's okay. Totally fine. White-only tutoring. Er, totally incorrect. Cannot do that. Latino, Hispanic math tutoring. Totally okay. Math group, math club, whatever. White only math club. So it's the same type of thing. It's all bull. It's just a label they're trying to put on people to separate and all that kind of stuff and oppress and uh, systemic victimization. Well, here's the deal. Uh, these people are mentally unhealthy. They believe in something. They want to be accepted. There's less than a 1% of people who are trans globally. Um, but we're catering to them as if they are royals. And guess what? There's no global monarchy. So uh, it is what it is. We're expected to hear a judgment within three to six months. And there you have it. TGIF, people, don't forget. Speak your mind. Don't be afraid to stand up tall. Whether you're trans or black or Mexican or white or Asian or pansexual, like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with standing up for what you believe in. But there's always a line that you should never cross, and that's becoming violent and murdering people because they disagree with you. Sigma Tiger, signing off.